Hello, I want to go over queries to the West Virginia Senate problem with you. Uh, we're going to today cover the idea of calculated fields in a query, how to format fields, how to use criteria to restrict results, use and or or criteria in a query, and use not criteria in a query. Uh, just as a reminder, this assignment requires the Windows version of Microsoft Office. You will either need access at a PC or the Mac VM and access. You're going to want to download the uh, zip file from your instructor's website, extract it, and begin. Um, I already have it loaded on my desktop, so I am going to right click, pick extract, extract it to my desktop, open it up, and we'll begin. One thing you might notice is if you see a security warning asking you to enable content, please do so. Okay, so once you have opened the file, you want to know that in the uh, background information, a uh, list of the tables is provided to you. That can be helpful when you're writing the query. But let's go ahead and begin to look at the first set of instructions. We've opened it. Um, now we're going to create queries to provide the information requested below. You're going to want to name each query after the step in which it appears. Um, and you should run your queries to test them. Make sure they display all and only the records that you would expect to appear. The first query we're going to work with is a calculated field. Um, we're, and we're also going to need to format the field. Um, as I've mentioned before, the first sentence of each query covers what you'll be doing. It's a description of the query itself. It can be useful to highlight it so that you know what information is available in that query. When you're answering your analysis questions, you can refer back to it. Um, the second step to the end, or second sentence to the end, covers what you'll actually be doing. In this case, we want to create a new query that lists each district, redistricting cycle, the population, and a calculated field with the number of households. You can calculate the number of households by using the formula that he provides. I'll show you how to enter that. And then you're going to need to format it uh, and do some sorting. So the first thing we want to do is look at the fields that we need. Um, he wants district, redistricting cycle, population, and a calculated field. So let's go over and let's create. We want to use query design. Um, I believe we are going to need districts. Let's go ahead and add that. From the add tables we get from that district redistricting cycle and we get the population that's great uh, and it looks like that may be all that we need uh, to do this entire query so let's begin work and let's see if we've missed anything i always like to adjust things so i can see uh, so first i'm going to add district then I'm going to add redistricting cycle. It's important to do it in the order that they're specified. Population. And then we need a calculated field. What I suggest you do before you add the calculated field, even before you do anything else, is at this point run the query and make sure you get results. And we get 51 results, and we're in the ballpark of where we need to be. So I'm going to click back on view and go back to design view. And then we're going to work on this final field where we are asked to calculate the number of households. It's actually very easy. You simply need to go over and click on the builder. And then we're going to name this field. So we're going to call it number of households, a colon. We're going to go down to the Senate table and down into the tables. And we need to take this. You can see it's from the districts table. The way to read this is from the districts table, take the population field. So I go over to districts, I double click on population. I'm going to go in and delete the expression. That's just a placeholder. So now I have number of households colon, district, exclamation point population. That translates in access speak to from the districts table, take the population field. I'm gonna hit the divide key and I'm put in 2.43. Now it's important to note that you cannot copy and paste this into the expression builder. You need to use the elements down here to build the expression. 
So make sure you've got it looking like this. You click OK. Now, he asks us to format the population and number of households as a standard type number with no decimal places. Let's take a look at that. The way you would typically format a uh, field would be to right click somewhere in the white, pick properties, and I would say, well, I'd like standard type number. But the next step, there's no place for decimal. Um, that is because you have just created the field and access doesn't know precisely. Okay, as I was saying, access doesn't know what's in that field yet. You've created the field, but because the query hasn't run yet, it doesn't know what's in it, so it can't offer a decimal place. So what you need to do before you can format it is actually run the query. Okay, you can see. Now, then we can go back, and you'll notice the option for the decimal place is there. We can just put no decimal places. Um, and then he asks us also to sort by the redistricting cycle and the district both in ascending order. Let's make sure I've got that. Yeah. You want to make sure they're in the correct order. And then we will run it again and we can take a look. We can see that it's whole numbers now. Uh, and we've got 51 records and we're in great shape. That's basically all you have to do there other than saving it and calling it the correct step number. Let me look to make sure it's okay. It's 4A. Query 4A. And then as a good practice, you want to close it up. Okay, the next step, query B, is going to create a query to view elections where the winner received less than 50% of the vote. Uh, we're going to list the year and the district, the winner's name, the last name, uh, and the percentage of the total vote they won. Then we're going to use criteria to draw down the number of results. Um, that's that second paragraph, only display records where the incumbent won less than 50%. And just a pro tip for you, whenever you see a value in parentheses in, in a query like this, you're probably going to use, want to use that. I don't suggest that you copy and paste it. You're going to want to type it yourself. Uh, that generally tends to work better. Just the information inside the parentheses, not the parentheses themselves. Um, and then you'll get three records and five fields. So let's go ahead and create. Again, you want to use query design. Uh, we want to clear off some of the uh, flotsam and jetsam from the previous. And let's see. Uh, we want the year, uh, the district, the winner's first name and last name, um, and the percentage of vote they won. So I think elections is mostly going to cover that. Let's see. District year, uh, the winner, and the winning percentage. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay there. So we'll close off the add tables. We're going to add the fields in the order specified. That's going to be important for the sort. You want to make sure you don't add extra or extraneous tables. Then down here, uh, we're asked to do less than 0.5. It's a decimal representation of 50%. Uh, and now let's go ahead and run. We've got three records, five fields. That's what we were asked to do. Uh, let's double check. Uh, we weren't asked to do any sorting, so we're in good shape. One other tip uh, is that oftentimes before I put criteria in, I will leave the criteria out, run, make sure I get results, then I'll put the criteria in and see if it restricts it to the correct number. That's a way for me to troubleshoot because after you put things in, it can sometimes be difficult to troubleshoot. So let me save, and this is query. 4B, and we'll close it up. Now, using AND or OR criteria in a query, the defining sentence is, we would like to learn more about self-funded candidates or those who raise no money, and write in candidates. Uh, create a query listing the year, the district, the candidate's first, last name, uh, full party name, funds, 
raised and votes received. Now, he's asked for something a little different here. He asks for the full party name instead of the abbreviation we've been using. So it looks like to me we're going to have to use a couple of tables. So we're going to go to Create. We're going to go to Query Design. We're going to bring up Elections, and we're going to expand that. Let's see. We want, we have the year. We have the district. We have the candidate's first name. Oops, no, excuse me. I oh, see. Uh, I have picked, and he's specifying candidate's first name. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and I'm going to put candidates up. It's important that you match what you're asked for. And I did that on purpose so that you could see that, you know, if there is an issue, uh, you have the ability to remove and go back. So let's take a look at this again. Uh, create a query listing the year, the district, the candidate's first name, candidate's last name. Uh, he wants the full party name. We didn't include that. So let's add parties. Okay, now you're not seeing a relationship here. This seems to be a quirk of this version of Access. Let me go ahead and close. And I'm going to call it correctly. I'm going to open it back up. Yeah, there you go. You can see the relationship there. That seems to be on the version of Office 365. I'm running a quirk. Um, now, let's see, where were we? Uh, we've got the candidate's last name, uh, the full party name, which we're going to take from this table that we added, and the amount of funds that were raised, and the number of votes that were received. And he only wants us to display candidates that were right in or who raised uh, zero dollars. The or is the critical there. So we would put under raised zero and typically in criteria I suggest that you make the criteria as simple as possible so we're going to put zero there. Let's uh, run that to see if we get results. We do. You can see here under raised we've got people who raised zero dollars. We only have 15 records though so we want to include our write-in candidates. So write-in would be under party name. So uh, what I want to do to make sure I get this right, is I'm going to open parties for a minute. And the criteria would need to be right in candidate. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to close that. And then under party name, because I want it to be an or, I'm going to put it down one line. You can see over here that it's or. And I'll paste that in. And then I typically do a space and then tab over. And you can see that it put right in candidate in quotation marks. Because you saw the little dialog box come up, uh, if I had simply hit tab at that point, it might have filled something else in. So I added the space to make it do that. Or you could have simply typed in uh, quotation marks, right dash in space candidate, and then in quotation mark, and it would work just fine. So let's run it and see if I've got this correct. I've got 17, uh, and I don't have to do any other sorts. So I will go ahead and right click here and save it, close it, and we can move on to the next. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next bit. Um, we're going to use not in a criteria, and then finally we're going to look at a SQL query. Uh, what we're asked to do here is create a query displaying information on all third party and write in candidates. Uh, list the year, district, candidate's name, first name, last name, and a full party name. Uh, we only want to display candidates who are not members of the Democratic or the Republican Party. All right, there's a couple of ways we can address this. Um, he, or the, the author of this project asks us to restrict to five fields. I'll tell you that, and then I'll show you another uh, the way that you might consider doing it as well. Um, you want to go to Create. You're going to want to go to Query Design. And you want to bring up, um, we know we're going to need the parties table because it references full party name. And we're, it references candidates, so we're going to talk about, or we're going to grab the candidates file. Again, it doesn't show the relationships, so I'm going to save. 
call it query 4D. I'm going to close. And then I'm going to open it back up in design view and you'll see that. Okay, I believe we have the tables we need. Uh, and so we're going to start to display things. We can expand this so that we could see everything. I'm going to add the year. I'm going to add the district. I'm going to add the candidate's first and last name. And I'm going to add the full party name. At this point, before I add the criteria, I like to run just to make sure we get results. And we've got way more results than we want, but that's okay. So we're going to try to restrict the results so that we don't get members of the Democratic Party or members of the Republican Party. This is a not in a criteria. Okay, so we need to put criteria under party name. I'm going to expand that column. Now, the special thing here is we have two exclusions. So we're going to want to exclude both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. I'll paste in what I've typed. It's going to be not quotation mark Democratic Party quotation and not quotation Republican Party quotation. If you do that, you get the 17 results and the five fields and you're in good shape. Now, there is one other way you could potentially do this. If you had trouble with the criteria there, you could um, also add the party abbreviation in, but not display it, and do not, uh, let's see, dim and not GOP. I believe those two are correct. Let's see if we get the right results, and we get the same. I sometimes have problems with the, the, the criteria uh, when it's longer, and that's another way around it if you want to take a look at that. Okay, we'll save and close this. And the final step is uh, E. Uh, we want to list each district, its counties, and the candidates from the 2014 election. SQL can help us do that. Uh, all you need to do is copy the code. You right click, pick copy, and then go over and create a new query. We are going to close the add tables. I'm going to click on SQL, delete the select that's in there, and paste in what we need. Run it, and we get 1,000 not. <laughs> we've got something wrong. Um, so we've got something to correct. Okay, so after we ran that one, we got 1,989 records. Uh, the instructions tell us that the provided query will show more records than it should because it's missing a table. Um, and you want to add the missing table to fix that query. Let's take a look at it because it's an interesting uh, issue. Let's do this one more time. Create, query design, and we are going to go into SQL view, paste it in, we're going to run it, and you can see that you've got too many uh, results. We go back to the design view, and you notice there's no relationship between candidates and districts. That causes a problem. So we need to figure out how to relate the two of them. What do they have in common? Um, what table do they have in common that would, could provide a link between them? So you might need to click right-click to add Show Tables. Um, we're going to take a look here, and we're going to see where we might find uh, a link that they have in common. Uh, let's see. We've got the candidates. We've got districts. Parties isn't going to do it because party was only linking to candidates. Uh, that leaves us with elections. So we add elections in, and let us, we've run into this issue before. Let's save. Call it query 4E. And we're going to close it. And then we're going to open it back up in design view and see if we have it correct. Yeah, you see, we are able to get from one table to another. Now, 
You can go from the candidates table over to elections and districts, even though um, we don't necessarily need the elections table in the grid below, having it lets us bridge between the two of them. And when you do that, you get the 39 expected records. All right, so then you close, you scroll down, and over here we need to go to database tools and hit compact and repair, and then we close. If you have any questions, you should certainly ask your instructors. Um, just note that on the latest version of Office 365 that you saw me use, initially when you bring the tables in, if it doesn't show the relationships, you should close and then open again, and the relationships likely will then display if you were expecting relationships. Thank you.